the previous lecture, uh, we started with very interesting and strange uh, Bible verse, uh, starting like this, which is Roman chapter 11, verse 32, for God has imprisoned all in disobedience, and so that he may be merciful to all old people. Isn't it strange? God wants to be merciful to everyone in the world. So that's why he imprisoned everybody in the whole world in the disobedience. Well, God says God made everyone not to be able to obey the law. Why? So he can, he can, so that he may be merciful. Merciful. Yeah. He wants to give them mercy. So give them mercy from the what? From the imprisonment in the disobedience. So Bible says disobedience, uh, sin is what? Transgression of the law. Uh, in other words, what sin is, is the disobedience to the law. So God made us disobedient. God made us not to be able to uh, obey the law, so he made us a sin, sinful. And then, he wants to give mercy to everyone who is not able to obey the law. Very interesting. And so then we discovered in everywhere else that definitely Paul is saying the same thing. For when you were slaves of sin, we we all have been slave to the sin. That means we all could not obey the law. What's wrong with that? That means God gave us the law through Moses. What kind of law? The law which we cannot obey. And... Uh, but the Jewish people, uh, uh, they thought they could obey that law. Okay. Uh, so the Paul was actually uh, obeying that law. And he was a Pharisee, and he taught that law to, uh, for the people to be able to uh, obey. And you look at this way. For when you are slaves of sin, you are free in regard to righteousness. Uh, so, uh, uh, slaves, you are slaves of sin. Then verse 22 says, Now, having been set free from sin, God imprisoned everyone, in the sin, then what? God sent everyone free from the sin. That means our salvation, right? Yeah. So, uh, so that's why to save all the sinners who's been under the sin, that means imprisonment in the sin, and finally God send his son Jesus and set everyone free from the imprisonment of the sin. So we all become set free from the sin. Now, <laughs> now uh, it says uh, in Galatians chapter 5, verse 18, but if you are led by the Spirit, how you can be set free? from the law, 
if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law anymore. So if you receive Holy Spirit, the Jesus sent, right? Then finally, you are, are not under the law anymore. Because you will be led by Spirit, Holy Spirit. Then Paul says something very big here. Romans chapter 8, verse 2. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ. There, there is a law in, in Christ, in Jesus. There's a law in Christ. And uh, so there's a law, law of the Spirit of the life in Christ Jesus has set me free. The law of the Spirit of the life, uh, which is in Christ, in Jesus, finally set me free from the law of what? From the law of sin and the death. The law of sin and the death is which law? That's the law of Moses. Why we can say the law of the sin and the death is the law of the Moses? Because Paul says this, the sting of death is sin. Death has a sting, like a bee sting, and which kills all human beings. Okay. The sting of death is a sin. Now, this is a shocking word. And the power of sin is the law. If I reverse it, the law of Moses is power of sin, which kills all human beings. So, well, sin kills us, right? But where is the, where the power of the sin coming from to, to be able to kill us? That's law. Yes. So Moses' law is really the law of what? Sin and the death. So Paul is saying, I, I received the Holy Spirit, which Jesus sent. And now I have a new law called, what? Spirit and life. The law of a spirit of life. That law came to me. That law is in whom? In who? Christ. So, the Israel law, the new law, I now discovered in Christ, it is a spirit, the law of a spirit of life. And that law I received, now I am set free from what? The law of Moses. Wow. Right? And so that, that's why the, the Paul says in 1 Corinthians 15, uh, 56, the sting of death is sin and the power of sin is the law. Uh, and then also Paul writes here, Romans chapter uh, 3, verse 9, both Jews and the, uh, and the Greeks, all men are under the what? Power of sin. What is power, power of sin? That's right here. Power, uh, power of sin is what? Law. The Moses law. So, uh, Paul says, all men, both Jews and Greeks, are under the power of sin means the power of Moses. So everyone to be saved, we need to be set free 
from this uh, law of sin and death, which is law of Moses, by receiving what? The law of the spirit of life, which is in, in, in the Christ. That's why the poor is so happy. Now I am set free from law of Moses. How? The Holy Spirit, Jesus gave me Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit showed me and gave me the new law called the law of spirit and life. Wonderful, right? Okay. And then Paul says, you were slaves of the sin. That means I was slave. I was a slave of the law, oh, Moses' law. Now I'm no longer slave to the law of Moses. So, but now, having, seen, having been set free from the sin, that means that the law of sin and death, right? Uh, now I'm, I'm becoming what? I become slaves of God. Uh, you have your fruit of holiness and, and the everlasting life now. So to be belong to uh, the God now, now I receive the uh, everlasting eternal life. And so the Paul said, but if you're led. You are also, you also led by Holy Spirit. You are not under the Moses law. Okay? Then, ah, uh, for the law of spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set me free from the law of sin and death. So, now, how it really shows in the Bible? Hmm. Uh, God says, I gave you the law of Moses, which you cannot obey. Therefore, you become slave of the sin. Okay? And also prisoner under the law. Why? Where, why did I do that? What's the reason? So that God may have mercy on everyone. So God can save us. So it was God's purpose. It was God's reason why he gave us that Moses law, which no one can really obey. Yeah. Then make them to know what really sin is. And the, the people have to find, I am the sinner, means what? I, when I see the law, law of Moses, I cannot obey this law. Oh. How can I obey? That's, uh, you love your neighbor as yourself, or do not covet, thou shalt not covet. Yeah. So, it is our nature, we, we, we are genetically wired to be what? To be selfish. That's why we cannot be that unselfish. Like, uh, and God says what? Love your, in, love your enemy. Oh, how, what can I, how can I do that? And, uh, so it was, the law is contrary to our human nature. Now that's what the sin really is, which is our nature. Now, all right. Now, this next Bible verse, we really have to understand correctly here, is that uh, uh, 
Roman chapter 5, verse 20, the law was and added. In this verse, it says, moreover, the law of Moses entered, uh, entered into our life that the offense, this offense means sin. In this NIV, it says trespasses, sin. This all both mean sin. The law was added so that sin might increase. Isn't that funny? See, to us, the law is being given to us from the government to increase the sin or decrease the sin. To decrease. But God gave law to increase the sin. For, to, to do what? To give us mercy and to save us, to be set free from the law. By what? By giving us the Holy Spirit. So, the biblical concept is totally uh, different, totally contrary to our uh, normal uh, concept to the law. The law is giving to, given to us to decrease sins in this society. So, or what? the law entered that the offense might abound. But where sin increased, grace increased much more. So, uh, when you see the law of Moses, wow! You know, I am very well respected from everybody in this whole country, and everybody think that uh, uh, I am very holy man. But when I look at the law, wow, I am what? I cannot keep any laws in this book. Moses' law. So. God gave you, <clears throat> so this verse says, God gave you the law, but you can't obey the law. As a result, sin increased, so that God can give you grace and save you. But if you keep on saying, I can obey the law, then you are what? You're a hypocrite. Yeah. Just because you didn't act, you know, uh, and uh, you didn't kill somebody, you didn't actually uh, uh, commit adultery, uh, that's why, yeah, I, I can, I, I'm keeping the law very well. No, that's not so. Well, that's what uh, God is saying. Now, there is an interesting story in the uh, uh, in Bible, the Acts. Uh, Acts. Uh, and here, in Acts 15, verse 5, But some believers who belong to the sect of Pharisees, some Pharisees, uh, but the Pharisees, but they believe Jesus. They also accepted Jesus. And uh, they stood up in the meeting. They stood up and said, they stood up and said, it is necessary for them to be circumcised and ordered to keep the law of Moses. It become big headache, and there was a big debate. Okay, so Pharisees says we Christians have to keep Moses' law, and the most representative, most symbolic law of Moses, one law, the most important law in the in the law of Moses is what law? the law of circumcision. So this 
circumcision uh, has to be done even on Sabbath day. Mm. Sabbath day, you cannot do. You are not supposed to do anything. You cannot uh, do any work. But circumcision is only exception. You have to do that even on the day of Sabbath day. And if you begin to do some research on circumcision, circumcision means born again in the spirit. So uh, I'll be getting into that uh, uh, the next lecture and so on. So uh, for the Christian, whoever believes God, the most important thing is what? Being born again. That means, uh, how can you be born again? By receiving Holy Spirit. So, if you don't know the Holy Spirit, no matter what you, how much you keep the, all the Moses law, it doesn't mean anything. You have to be uh, born again. That means you have to be circumcised. It's a uh, circumcision is really spiritual circumcision. It's not just the body circumcision. So Paul says in the Roman chapter two, verse twenty nine says, circumcision has to be done on your what? On your heart, not on your body. Yeah. That that's what the Paul says. Okay, <laughs> now. So Peter, uh, who uh, born again now, stood up. Uh, so Peter stood up and said to them, uh, stood up, said to them, God made a choice among you that I should be the one through whom the Gentiles would hear the message of the good news and become believers. Okay. And God said, who knows the human heart, testified to them by giving them the what Holy Spirit, just as he did to us. Even Gentiles who has what, no laws to do circumcision and so on. But, uh, but God gave, God treated us the same way. He gave us the same Holy Spirit than He gave them, even though they didn't have what? Circumcision. And they gave them uh, the Holy Spirit, so it made them all born again together. And in cleansing their heart by faith, He has made no distinction between them and us. We, Uday, uh, <laughs> we Jews and the Gentiles, there's no difference. That means as long as you receive the Holy Spirit, being born again, the Moses law, the law of circumcision, which is uh, the most important, uh, the law hmm. is, uh, is not in effect because of what we ourselves, including uh, Paul, were set free from the law of sin and death, which is law law of Moses, by the what law of spirit and the life, which is in Christ Jesus. Yeah. Wow. Mm. Now, this verse, Acts 15.10, 10, is, is very important. Okay. Very important. Uh, now, therefore, why are you putting God to the test by placing on the neck of the disciples? Uh, the disciples means what? Uh, the people who is working hard to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ, 
right? And um, uh, the placing on the neck of the disciples a yoke. Mm. In Korean, mong <laughs> yeah. yoke that neither, 자, 그 yoke, this yoke is neither our ancestors, our fathers, nor we have been able to bear. The Pharisees insisted that the Gentile people has to be what? Circumcised and follow the Moses law. <clears throat> So Peter is saying the yoke is that Moses' law, including circumcision and the keeping other law of Moses. He called so yoke. So the yoke is Moses' Moses' law. The Moses' law, neither our ancestors nor we have been able to bear. This means what? We couldn't even keep our ancestor, uh, you know, that Abraham and all these our ancestors were not really able to keep this law. Wow, that means so the Christians. Those people who knew, who accept Christ, already knew, even uh, like Peter's, knew that, boy, this law, I cannot keep, I cannot obey. That's what he's talking about. I don't know how people can, uh, uh, you know, uh, Forget this. I forgot this. I saw this Bible verse long, long time ago. But uh, uh, I always thought what? Ah, uh, you know, uh, uh, we've been keeping uh, all disciples um, like uh, Paul, keeping the God's law, law of Moses, what? Very, very, uh, very, very good. But Peter says, I could not. You know, this is uh, why the Peter, uh, the Jesus went to Peter and uh, picked him as what? As a disciple. Why? Peter was what? Sad. And he, uh, he always agonized and he, <gasps> Uh, he didn't know what to do because he 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 knew he could not what obey the law of Moses, right? But uh, everybody else feels what? Yes, we we keep Moses' law. We're doing fine. We can go to heaven because we keep the law of Moses very well. But Peter was different. I think all Peter's brothers, you know, who got Jesus came and picked them as disciples, really felt what? Boy, we, I cannot keep, we cannot keep this law. Then Jesus came, make them his disciple to save them. That interesting. Yeah. So Peter said that you know our ancestors could not really keep it, and I could not keep it. Uh, yoke, uh, yoke. Jesus says, "This is what Jesus says. What kind of yoke? My yoke. My yoke. And so it was what." Law of Moses was the law, uh, the yoke of Moses, 
And uh, there is what? There's a new law, the law of spirit and the life. This is a new yoke. Okay. My yoke. Jesus says, Come to me, all, all you who labor and are heavy laden, all burdened so bad. So that means what? Your Moses yoke was too heavy to, to really live with. Right, and and I will give you, oops, I will give you rest. Uh. So, all Jewish people were so tired, right, and heavy laden, and heavily burdened. And Jesus says, "Come, I will give you what rest." That means rest for why they were, the Jewish people were so heavy laden and the tired of what? Keeping the law of Moses. So difficult. And Jesus says, I will give you what? My yoke. Jesus' yoke is what? The new law in Jesus, which is Apostle Paul, accepted, and that that's how he became set free from law of Moses, which is the law of sin and death. Okay. So, uh, <clears throat> Jesus says, take my yoke. See? Take my yoke. There is, uh, there is, uh, so, Moses' yoke was the law of Moses, and Jesus said, My yoke, there's a new law. Law of what? Spirit and life, right? This, the law of spirit life is the law of what? Christ, not Moses. Okay. So, my yoke upon you, and they learn from me, for I am gentle and the lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. So for a long time, under the yoke of Moses, people were living so hard and so tired. Now Jesus gave, uh, came to so. The old Jewish people were under the law, under the sin, right? Imprisoned, and could not be set free. Jesus says, I came here for you to be set free from that very difficult law, okay, which you cannot obey. Then Jesus says, my yoke, my law, the law of Christ. My yoke is easy and my burden is light. That's why Jesus says what? Circumcision? You don't have to do it anymore. Why? You are, you received the Holy Spirit and Holy Spirit circumcised your what? Your heart. You are truly circumcised. Why you need to do circumcision, right? Wow. So, this is how the disciples, Peter and Paul, is what? Uh, Peter also here is saying that what? Uh, I am set free from the law of Moses. Okay. So we saw the word law of law of Christ, right? Jesus said, "My yoke is the law of Christ instead of law of Moses." Okay. Now, here we see the First Corinthians chapter nine, verse twenty-one. Very interesting. To those to those outside the law, outside the law means uh, 
There's no law. The Gentile people, you know, they have no law. Those, to those outside the law, I became as one outside the law. But not being without law toward God, but toward God, I am under the law of whom? Christ. I am no longer under the Moses law. Why? Because I received the Holy Spirit and I'm born again. Now, that Holy Spirit set me free from the law of Moses, and which is what? The law of sin and death. Now, I received the law of Christ, uh, which is what? The law of spirit of life. Mm. So, this is... Uh, the the word called the law of Christ appeared, right? Uh, that's what Paul says. And also in Galatians chapter six, two, uh, verse two, bear one another's burden, and so fulfill the what? The law of Christ. So definitely, you can see the contrast between the law of Christ and law of Moses. Right? So the law of Moses is the law of sin and death. And law of Christ is the law of spirit, because Holy Spirit gave uh, Paul that the law of Christ. That's why the, the, he called it the law of spirit of life. I wish you all have uh, uh, this kind of experience, being set free from the law of Moses. Uh, by what? By the law which is in Christ. Now, uh, Apostle Paul says, which is the law of Christ instead of law of Moses. Uh, then, uh, you are being set free from the Moses law to what? Law of Christ. Wonderful, right? Okay, now, I put uh, you know, this title here. Do you see the contradiction? Long time ago, when I saw this uh, two Bible verse, it was so contradicting. I couldn't really understand. Was what Roman chapter two thirteen says, for not the hearers of the law are just before God, but the doers of the law shall be justified. Which means what? If you do, if you live according to the Moses uh, law, then you'll be justified. That means you'll be saved if you do it. Then. Next chapter, verse, uh, chapter 3, verse 20. For no human being will be justified in God's sight by these prescribed by the law. This means what? Uh-uh. You cannot, no, you cannot be saved by what? Doing the law. Obeying the law. Isn't that contradicting each other? Right? Then the difference is, so I searched, I did some research, and uh, here in the Roman chapter 13, the doers of the law is uh, in Greek word, uh, the, the different. It is uh, here in chapter 213, doers in Greek is a poetess. Poetess. And here, you do, uh, 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 here, you do, do, it's a poeo. So it's all the same thing. If you really poeo, poeo by what? By nature. 
if you do the, uh, if you live the law, Moses' law, by what? By nature. By nature means, uh, your, your, uh, 한국말 하면, in Korean, 본성. Okay. Your nature. Uh, 이 본성에 따라서, nature is, is, we are born with it, right? But we are born with the nature of what? Selfishness. Yeah. Uh, so, if you can obey the law by your nature, the things contained in the law, these having not the law, are the law unto themselves. If you are born with the nature of what? God. Then you can keep the law. You can obey the law. But our nature is what? Sinful nature. So we cannot really obey the law. Now here in this uh, NRS, it's more uh, distinctively, we're clearly showing the difference. When Gentiles who do not possess the law, but do instinctively, instinctively means what? 본능적으로. Instinctively, you keep the law, even though you do not have what law. You never learned what the law of Moses was. But if you do instinctively do it, then you can be what. Ah, so instinctively, what the law requires. These, though not having the law, are law to themselves. If you're born with the law in your genes, so that's uh, the law uh, uh, having what loving uh, your neighbor as yourself is just my instinct. Wow, that's all. that's a, that's a Jesus. So, uh, so if uh, I keep the law by instincts, I'm nature righteous. So if you can be, if you are a righteous person, that means what? You're born righteous, so your born nature is, uh, is, 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 is the same nature as the nature in the Moses law. So they are born, uh, so they are born righteous, uh, genetically righteous, don't need to, uh, don't need to have the law. So Moses writes, the righteousness that comes from the law, that the person who does, uh, who does poiel means uh, by nature, okay, ponnungjogoro, uh, these things will, uh, these things will live by them. So who, whoever, can obey the law instinctively, then they can be righteous. They can, they are righteous. They don't need Jesus if you can do that, obey that law instinctively. Okay. And the law, uh, the man that does poyero, the law, shall live in them. Mm. So, instinctively, uh, if you can obey the law, you have life in the law. But we don't have that instinction. Our instinction is a very bad <laughs> instinction, which is a instinction which is contrary to God's nature. Bible here, uh, we can see that we go to Ephesians, all of it, uh, verse two, uh, uh, chapter two, verse three. All of us once lived among them in the passions of our flesh, 
following desires of the flesh, and we were by what? By nature means 그렇게 태어난 사람들이래. 본성적으로 by nature children of wrath. Children of wrath means what? It's a God. God is a God. 하나님이 God is angry. Why? Because when God see us born with what? That kind of bad nature. Why he was angry? Because he has to what? Sacrifice his son for us. Why? We cannot keep the law. We cannot obey the law. That's why. So, uh, this, in this sense, the Psalm uh, 51 is very important. The Psalm, Sipion, Osipion, Psalm 51, a Psalm of David, when the prophet Nathan came to him after he had gone into Bathsheba. Uh, after David sinned, right? And uh, he committed adultery with the Bathsheba, and then he killed the Bathsheba's husband. Uh, uh, and uh, then he prays. See? Look at this. Indeed, David, this is what David said. Indeed, I was what? Born guilty. Nay, in my gene, there is a sin in me. Born guilty. A sinner when my mother conceived me. In my mother's womb, when I was conceived, my father's uh, sperm met with my mother's uh, uh, egg. Uh, then I was finally conceived. From that moment, I was what? Sinner. We know. 태어나기를 the born sinner here in the verse eleven. In ver in this verse, we can see it. The David was already born again. Why? Because he he got the Holy Spirit. Okay. Even then, he sinned. Okay. So David prays to God. Do not, uh, okay. Do not cast me away from your presence, and do not take your Holy Spirit from me. So, with Holy Spirit, as long as we have this body, which has what sinful gene. We can sin, right? Yeah, that's what David says. Please, do not take your Holy Spirit from me. I already had Holy Spirit, yet I commit this sin. So, God, what? What did God do? God forgave David. According to the Moses law, David must be what? Executed. No. But David was what? Set free from the, the law of sin and death, which is Moses' law. And how he, the Holy Spirit gave them a new law, the law of Christ. Which calls what? Which called the law of 
spirit of life. So, so then David says, "Restore to me the joy of your salvation." I had a joy because of your salvation. See, even before him, uh, David already knew the Mo uh, the law of Moses is uh, is uh, what is a covenant which which is a promise that uh, God will send Jesus, His Son Jesus, to save everybody. Why? Because we are the people who cannot obey the law of Moses. See? So, restore to me joy of your salvation and sustain me the willing spirit. Uh, that means, uh, before I sinned, I had what? Willing spirit. I was always what? Uh, was ready to do good things to the people and uh, uh, praise God. And, but after he sinned, he was uh, what? Captured by under the control of what? The evil spirit, which took away his joy of salvation and the willing spirit. So, uh, David is saying what? Create in me clean heart. Even though I am saved by the, uh, the Christ Jesus you will send to save me. I sent. So, uh, in my heart, the sin was controlling. Sin is controlling me. And I need to have what? Clean heart. Clean heart to be created, recreated by you, God. Please do that. Oh God. And put, put a new and the right spirit with me. I'm being, I'm suffering from what? This evil spirit. I need God, I need you to what? Restore the spirit, Holy Spirit. So, so this much, we, uh, we are born sinner, so even though we have a Holy Spirit and which made us born again, still we need to keep on struggling uh, with the sin hmm, until we become what? A new creation. Uh, so, uh, so that's why Paul says here, right here, uh, Galatians 6, 15, he says, what? He says, for neither circumcision nor uncircumcision is anything. Circumcision, which is the law of Moses, is no longer what? Meaningful. If you become a born again and what? Then you will be what? A new creation. The new creation, becoming new creation is everything, uh, but the circumcision or not non uncircumcision, which is what? Anything. Nothing. Being born again is everything. So, uh, the law of spirit of life is everything. I'm no longer under the law of Moses. Why? 
because Jesus set me free from the law of Moses by his law, which is the law of spirit of life. So, I wish we all can really enjoy this, uh, the, the law of spirit of life, which Paul accepted the given. So we can no uh, we can no longer be what uh, uh, struggling with the Moses law anymore, which is what anyway we cannot obey. So okay, the law of uh, law of circumcision of the Moses, which is what which really the true circumcision is a, a circumcision of a heart by the Holy Spirit. How can we circumcise? Myself with the Holy Spirit. Uh uh. It's the Holy Spirit has to circumcise our heart. But the Jewish people says, okay, he cut the skin and then, yes, we obey the Moses law. Uh uh. That was not the obedience. It was nothing. Until you receive what? Holy Spirit. And then become Again. So, may God bless you to be set free from the law of Moses, which is the law of sin and death, by the law of Christ, which is the law of the Spirit and the life. Amen. <laughs>